Welcome guys. Uh, we're about to start a presentation right now about the role for the EAGBL uh, structure. This is the East Asian Global Basket. Uh, it is, uh, you know, despite the name, not just East Asian instrument, it's more of a global instrument. And our, it's my uh, colleague here from Investec, Yapi, will walk you through the process. For those that have been to a Yapi presentation before, you know it's a very good presentation. And so you'll be quite lucky to have had him come through. Uh, just to give you a roundup as to why we like this product and what we think the product is suitable for at the moment. The world is very uncertain at the moment. You know, we are seeing a situation in which we have not just the normal, you know, interest rate hikes and so on happening, but we have stuff in the Ukraine. We have uh, that causing a food situation globally. We've already seen stuff happening in South Asia with Sri Lanka, possibly Pakistan, also being caused by what's happening with the food situation. Uh, you read the latest uh, copy of The Economist, they're talking about the coming food catastrophe. Uh, the world is less uh, certain right now than it was you know, even a year ago. Now, in that kind of environment, one of the most powerful things to have is a guarantee on your capital. And one of the better things to have in terms of guarantees is a guarantee in your capital in US dollars, which we consider to be the best uh, guarantee in the world. Uh, there's a couple of currencies in the world that can play the function of the US dollar. There is the dollar, of course, there's the euro, there's the Chinese yuan, there's the Japanese yen, and maybe the British pound as well, you know, kind of in that, in that level. The Japanese and the British, quite frankly, are not comparable. The Chinese have their own problems. You see how much it fluctuates versus the uh, dollar. And the Europeans right now are experiencing a war on their borders. You know, if inflation is bad in the US, it's much worse in the European Union. Uh, if instability is bad in the US, it's much worse in the European Union. So the dollar remains our preferred currency as a reserve currency, as a, as a safe haven rather. And so 100% guarantee in a safe haven currency like the dollar, very attractive. And Yapi will go through what the upside is from here. But what I want you guys to understand is that this is a very safe instrument in terms of, uh, of course, if the credit you know, holds, but in terms of the guarantee given to you in your capital, this is something special. You don't usually get 100% US dollar uh, guarantee except from Investec. And so this is why we really like this product. Uh, Yapi, if you wanna continue. Sure, thanks, Swift. Um, so, just to um, come to the to the offering, um, as you said, uh, the, the name, uh, don't let the name uh, distract. The indices that we're going to be using for this uh, next five years uh, is a replica of the MSCI world or country. So what we have structurally is a Guernsey company that's listed in Bermuda and the clients buy shares in the company. The company uh, is... Uh, set up in a, in a manner that uh, Investec is investment advisor to the company. And we're going to buy the instruments which give effect to the payout uh, as assets inside that company. Now, I think your business might already have some shareholders in the existing East Asian VIF. Uh, yes, we do. Okay, so we'll show the, the, the participants in the discussion how that share is done at the end of this uh, presentation. But simply speaking, the shares are then designed such that they have a five-year life. They're all in US dollars, as you said, and they have a capital prote protection at 100% of what, uh, what the client puts in if they put in new capital. And those clients who roll, who are already in the share, will lock in their performance, and that will become the new 100 for the new deal. Okay, so looking straight at what happens, this offering closes 20 June. So just be mindful that it closes 20 June. Um, it's a five-year share. The returns are calculated on this portfolio of indices, 45% S&P, 20 Euro stocks, 20 Nikkei, and 15 emerging markets. We've back-tested it. That's 97% the same thing as the MSCI world. We speak here of a participation that participates from the first percent that it goes up, up to an index level of 40 with the gearing of 120. Uh, at the moment, the, the gearing is actually looking like 130, 130 plus in fact, because the rates have gone up some more since we uh, marketed the product. So keeping it at very conservatively 120, what that means is that if the market goes up 10, uh, you get 12 if you've got a 120 gearing. If you've got a 130 gearing, then you've got 13. And it maxes out it maxes out when the index is done 40. So when the index is done 40, 
if you go to 130 gearing, you've got 52. But if the index goes down, you got 100% capital protection. So you get your $100 back. Okay, so that's the key. So if you're in cash today, um, you know, for the next five years, interest rates might go up, but it's uncertain what yield you're going to get in dollars. Plus, you've got to pay income tax on that interest if you earned interest. So this is a nice opportunity to get geared exposure to shares. But if the timing is wrong, then you get your cash back. Because in our experience, the cash is better than a crash. Okay, always better to have cash than a crash. And you and Gary know, if you look at the very long term for world equities, um, five-year rolling returns, if you look over about 200 years, have been prevalent for about 11 to 12% of time. But that's the important 12% not to be part of the market, eh? when it goes down 40. So ordinarily, investors have to stomach that 10 or 12% because they never know when it's coming up. And they can't say, oh, I wish I wasn't there because if you're in, you're in and you're going to get hurt. Okay, so for the risks that are out there, it's nice to have a portfolio portion where the capital is protected. How do we do this? I'll give you just high level how we do it, Viv, is we get $100 from all the customers and we're going to put roughly 76% of that in bonds that are subordinate debt issued by Investec in dollars. That's tier two bonds. And that 76 will grow to 78, 79, 80, and mature to 100 over five years. Secondly, from 76, we had 24 left over. So we're going to put aside for fees, costs, expenses, tax exemption for the Guernsey company, which is very, very low charge. Um, in total, 7%, which amortizes down to zero over time, and that leaves 17. And with the 17, we're going to go to eight banks. They've got to have an S&P A or better rating. We're going to say to them, we want to participate in the first 40% of this index performance. And they give us their pricing. And it so happens that with 17 cash, we can buy 1.3 times the, the, the participation. So that's why for every 1% the market goes up, the investor is going to get 1.3. Okay, just stop me if, if there's any questions needed. Just looking at the nature of the debt, uh, it is important that the capital is protected subject to the health of Investec because it's the in, Investec bonds that are going to give us that underpin. This debt is subordinate to the depositor. Uh, the debt has to be issued legally as a 10-year instrument. Um, with the investor having the right to buy it back after five. Now, they'll always buy it back because if they don't, they take a 20% per year cut in the recognition that they're getting from the Reserve Bank. And they're only issuing that type of debt because they have to for the capital of the bank, for the Basel regulations. So it's very unlikely that they won't call the debt. There's no South African bank that we know of that's ever not called the callable bonds back. Uh, so that's fairly certain they'll do that. If they don't, what happens is we pay the customers out to profit on the options after five years. And then the fact that they're waiting for the capital, they'll get a running yield of about 5.6, 5.7 in dollars, uh, but very unlikely to happen. If you look at what's inside this portfolio of indices, it's really all the major shares of the world in total, then 2,174 shares embedded in those indices. And Viv, as this is the passive part of the client's portfolio, you know, they just want the best shares across the world at all given points in time. Because as we know, if a share is poor, it falls out the index or gets a lesser weighting. And if a share is good for whatever reason, be it a commodity, ability to pass through inflation to the client, for whatever reason, it has a higher weighting. Okay, so it's a very broad-based share exposure. If you look at the reason why such a share would be nice in a total, this shows you the five-year rolling returns of the MSCI world, which our portfolio is 97% correlated to. And ordinarily, you know, you get good times. In history, there have been poor times. Uh, the last 13 years has been a bit like the Goldilocks years. You know, the porridge has always been half warm. Very nice time for world equities. But other than the bit of a cold we got here with COVID, 
which quickly recovered thereafter. If you go further back in history, you can see some very uh, bad negative periods. Um, and this is what this share is designed to do, is to say, the worst I'm going to get is my capital back at 100, and I'm going to get up to 52. And it's just a coincidence that right now, the most recent five-year rolling returns is just above 50, on, on 45.50. So we think that's a great asset to have in a portfolio, as opposed to just cash and just live equities. Because live equities will give you potentially more than 52, but you can lose. Okay. Uh, if you look at uh, the other benefit of this structure, if you went in at 100 and let's say that general equity markets fell badly to 50, the bond, that 76 always grows to 100. So you're going to get that irrespective of what the market does. So the client gets the $100 back. Now, Viv, you appreciate if the market went down to 50 and you had $100, you can buy double the market the day after. Where someone who owned the market now has to look at their statement telling them they're worth 50. They need the market to double 50 on 50 to get back to 100. Okay, so this is what we call a look back option. A look back option is a beautiful asset in a portfolio. It's the ability to go to the end date, then look back and choose what's the right thing to have done, knowing what the history now has. So you'd appreciate if we look back and it's gone down 50, it would have been better to just stayed in cash. But if it was a good time, it would have been better to own equities, shares. Okay, so it's got this advantage that you have the benefit of hindsight, which is actually a perfect size. You're always going to know with hindsight what you should have done. It's difficult to look forward. Um, if we look at another good reason to include these shares, uh, you know, I've been doing this with at Investec for 20 years. Uh, we've now done 175 listed instruments worldwide. And you guys have been participants in a number of those. And of those 175, we've had 98 that have matured, finished their three years or their five years. Of the 98, we had seven where we returned capital only, 91 profitable. This is one of those seven. And this is the MSCI World All Country Index. And uh, what's happened in this time over the 2008 crash, our share gave clients 100 pounds back when the physical market was down 44. The clients were quite happy because if they'd owned the market and it was down 44, they'd have to rise 44 on 56, which is 75%. They saved that loss. That's a permanent saving for the rest of their life. So it's, we're not talking theory here. We've had this experience. If we look at the uh, volatilities in the market, this is what we call the implied volatility. And you can see Viv, what happened with the COVID it shot up, came back down, and recently with the turmoil in the market has picked up quite a bit. That's why we can't give the 200 gearing we gave on the previous phase because that was done when volatility was super, super low. But just to focus the mind, uh, investors say to me, but you know, can't I just buy an ETF and then I buy my own insurance? Like I buy car insurance or medical or life or household insurance. You can in investments, but you know, for five-year protection for $100 on equity as volatile as, as it is, would cost you 18 to 20%. So say, Viv, you wanted to buy the market, but you take out your own insurance, not buy East Asian. You could only get 80% of the upside. Whereas here, you're getting 130% of the upside. Okay. So in that instance, the market would have to do about 65% so that your 80% of it could give you 52. Yeah, you only need the market to do 40 and you get 52. You see it? So it's very beneficial. And that's after all fees, costs, and expenses. Now, why we put the cap at 40? Some people say to me, why did you put the cap at 40? You know, why do you only participate in the first 40? We've looked at this as an extract from Credit Suisse's yearbook. And it shows 120-year performance in dollars, world exposure. Um, the best asset class was equity with reinvestment of dividends before fees, gave 8.2 per annum for 120 years. Bonds, five, and cash, 3.7. The 
if you strip out the inflation, the inflation was about 2.9 per annum. Those will give you the real return averages for 120 years. If you compound that for 120 years, you get a nice little 49,000, 1,100 and 160 for the three asset losses. So what our argument with is we say that clients must go with a 100% geared exposure to equity. And only in that 12% of time that equity crashes, then default to having had cash. Okay. As opposed to buying a balanced fund or something like that, and you know that half your money is going to be in these low yielding assets, especially dangerous with inflation potential risk. You see it? Right. This is where the yield curve is now in US dollars. So between sort of 2.5%, you can say is roughly the rates. But look where the long term averages at 5 and 3.7 for bonds and cash. So this means there is a risk that interest rates could rise. And you and I know that's not great for equities. But we believe that you should still go because if you look at the long term equities showed over decades, it's the best asset by far. And Viv, you'd appreciate it. it's the only one that can pass inflation through to the consumer. Because look at commodity stocks, look at oil stocks today. Um, if you had bonds or cash, you can't pass the inflation through. You just negatively correlated to inflation. So this is the best asset class. And at the moment, the price earnings ratio is actually trading below the long-term average PE ratio at MSCI world or country level. If you look at the individual markets, this is the S&P. It's trading very much on the long-term average. Uh, but the Euro stocks, the Nikkei and emerging markets, nice and cheap. So we think that, you know, you can never time the market exactly. But if you can go in, as you said, with the protection, you can sleep better. At least you know you're in equities. It's a five-year term. It's not a short-dated term. You, I, I must mention, Viv, that the investors have got daily price, daily liquidity. You can sell out any time. Uh, you guys have experienced that. Uh, you have a 1.25% early redemption fee should you want to get out. Then, If you look at the benefit of the structure, um, this is just using one of the other shares called the Optimal. I think you guys have got that one as well in your portfolios. We started in 2004 at 1,000 pounds. Every five years or four years when it matures, you lock in that yield. So in other words, you roll your shares, the option pays out, the bonds pay out, but you keep your shares. So you have no capital gains tax, but you deleverage all your equity risk because you've got a new capital protection. And then we set a new floor and a new upside. And your share will do its whatever it'll do daily. Also, one day when you sell the shares, you pay tax on the profit in the foreign currency. So look at this. I bought the share at 1,000 pounds in 2004 when the RAND was 1116. So my RAND price was 11,000. So I bought a feeder fund, it would have been 11,000. If I sell today at 2493, I'd make 149% pound profit. 2493 less what I paid a thousand. But if that was a RAND feeder fund, I'd be at 50,000 proceed versus 11,000 purchase. So we're talking 400% versus 149. On the 149, I can choose either to pay tax at the prevailing RAND pound or the average for the last 12 months. So if you're in a soft currency world like we are in South Africa, this is the expected RAND dollar forward, expecting a roughly 26% devaluation, then it makes a lot of sense to have your savings in hard currency, where the tax is driven by the profit in the hard currency, especially if like we've got the advantage here, every four or five years when it matures, you can kick the tin down the street. So if you sold your shares, you pay 18% capital gains tax, and then have to go and buy something with that money. But if you roll the shares, then you lock in all the profits and you stay 100% equity centric because your gearing is based on 100 in power and dollars uh, on the equity markets. So this is the big difference between this and a unit trust or a share portfolio or an ETF. Okay, just also just coming back to another point I wanted to emphasize here, Viv, looking at this 8.2 per annum, you'd appreciate that over the 120 years, the clients didn't get the total market plus dividends, they had costs. 
So if you take the average cost of a total expense ratio, say, of the big unit trusts in the world or share portfolio management structures, that would bring that down to about 6.97, about 1.2, 1.3 total expense ratio. So that compounded for five years is 40. Okay. So that's why we're saying we're happy to put the cap at 40 because it's the 120 year type average that clients would have got, but then rather get a geared exposure. If you look at the stats, I don't know, I'm sure Gary and you guys check these stats out as to what the propensity is of active management to beat the passive. Um, if you take the total expenses into account, uh, although the active processes give you the dividends, uh, only about 40 to 45 percent of them can outperform the price only index. Remember, this customer is going to get the index times 1.3. So if it's good times, this thing will probably beat 80% of active managers, unless the market did more than 55, in which case, obviously, they would have done better. But because you don't have capital at risk, it seems like a nice addition to a portfolio. Okay, so the fees and costs, um, it's your prerogative. If you can charge to the clients not to upfront if you charge an upfront. If you do, that wouldn't be part of the capital, but I'm not sure what your practice is there. Oh. We never do. Uh, just to, guys to know that uh, by principle, we never charge an upfront fee. Okay, so, that's excellent. So in that case, then for the clients, it's fantastic because all the fees are that seven we spoke of. They built into the pricing. And the other nice thing, Viv, is that we have a cost provision. That's for the lawyers, the auditors, all those guys of a half a percent. And that's calibrated uh, on about a $50 million size deal. As of right now, we're looking at $100 million plus aiming for $200 million. So we've, we've already surpassed the required volumes that we need to, you know, to more than double the break even on the costing. Okay, so that's that. I just want to show you um, one or two other things. So obviously the risk here Viv, is to Investec. It's to the tier two debt of Investec and I just want to make sure that the participants understand that risk. Um, firstly, the risk to the option providers, because we have the option purchase from one of eight banks. Those banks have to have an S&PA or better rating, be doing business with Investec and have been through the Investec credit process. And we've never had one in 22 years, over 175 listings that's failed. So we're very, very particular who we trade with. So that's the criteria. Then the second risk is that 76, which grows to 100, which is Investec. If you look at the general equity, which is the first asset that loses, the Investec, as we, as we know today, Viv, is after we split out 91. And that share price you'll see, um, please, as a shareholder, has gone up 190% in two years. Okay. So that doesn't show us huge stress or problems. Uh, it seems as if SA banks are all very well capitalized, and Investec is probably the best of the pick as far as capitalizations are concerned. If you look at where this debt fits into the balance sheet, uh, you've got the depositors is this blue box here, and uh, the subordinated debt is there to protect the depositors. So below the subordinated debt is the tier one capital, the preference shares, and the ordinary shares. The ordinary shares lose first, they paid last. And because of how strong the ordinary shares are standing, the investors are well protected here because as you know, Viv, if Investec didn't pay the interest obligation on a debt instrument, the equity goes to naught. Just looking at last page, uh, Investec Limited is the issue of this debt and their market capitalization is $6.08 billion. Okay. The tier one capital of Investec uh, Limited is 12.2 and the bank is 15.8 and the Basel requirement is only six and a half. At total capital, which includes the tier two, we at 16 and 20 respectively, only requiring 10. And as you know, Viv, the big thing with banks is they're highly regulated. So every quarter, they've got to submit all the numbers to the regulators, which would definitely get them to go get more capital if they became anywhere thinly capitalized. So the investors have a huge amount of protection. Investing's very profitable. Uh, they had results about two weeks ago you can go and look at the results, very profitable bank, and, and it's got very powerful capital 
to protect the depositors and to protect the bondholders. Okay. Can I just stop there for a moment and see if there's questions on what we've said? If so, just going to check the other questions. I do not see any in the chat or in uh, the Q and A. Any of you guys okay. have questions at the moment? All right. So what I'll do now, Viv, just to show the uh, the participants and maybe there's some of the existing East Asian shareholders. Uh, you know, how that share, which is the one that's maturing now, how that's done. So this is the fact sheet of the existing East Asian. And you may recall with all these have Bloomberg tickers. So the clients just put the ticker code in their cell phone and they can see the access, the price real time anywhere in the world, or they're going to the website where they can get a monthly fact sheet. This is a typical monthly fact sheet. And this one Viv, is after three exit averaging locked in. So what we have is at the end of all these companies, we have the last four months, the beginning of the, the month, end of the month, four data points uh, that we check where the level is uh, to reduce the pin risk, you know, the risk to one date. And in this instance, this one was designed with a 200 gearing between five and it happened to be 34.1. So the cap was a 34.1. And after three measurements, the average is 44. So what that means with is the market can go down uh, to four because you've got 30 spare. You need 34 and three of them already gave you 44. So these investors are going to get, unless the market gets totally smashed, they're going to get the full maximum, which happens to be 63%, 58 from the options and five from the debt. So if we look at uh, those shareholders and say, okay, so how does that compared to what they would have had had they bought on the first day uh, the tracker or the major unit trust in the country. So here's the graph starting at 100. The red line is the investing product. That's our product. The black line is the MSCI World Index, the price only index. And these other four are very large, very substantial um, uh, unit trust, international unit trust that are benchmark to the MSCI world or country, that that's the benchmark of those unit trusts. We don't want to give the names because we don't want it to be, you know, someone saying, look at Coronation or look at Orbis or look at this one by name, but they're the big guys and you know who they are. But what's happened here, which I want to show you, Viv, is the red line, can you see what happened with the COVID? This is the COVID. Can you see how little the red went down compared to physical assets? Because it's got that bond, and the option on the market. So it's got a very powerful underpin. Okay. And secondly, look at the last four months where markets have come down. Can you see the benchmark came down? The equities came down as expected. Because this had the four months exit averaging and that 200 gearing, the share just carried on going up. Okay. So the share is going to mature at 63. And today the benchmark's at 49. So your existing shareholders have got the situation with markets at 40, they make 62, they lock it in by rolling, no CGT. And when we go into the new share in, in first week in July, the index is available at 40. So we buy in at the index at 40 cheaply. They've locked in 22 permanent benefit for the rest of their life because they've got a capital protection on that 22 plus the hundred, obviously. So this is a very strong demonstration of the benefit of having the structured product in addition to ordinary shares. And what's also interesting, Viv, is as expected, with the benchmark being a 39, there was a 42 and a 44 in the market amongst the fund managers. And there was a 31 and a 25. So exactly as I would have expected, two better, two worse than the benchmark. What we're saying is if you've got 130% of that benchmark as your targeted return in the next year, uh, we think that you stand in a very powerful position. Specifically, because if this 100 doesn't go up, but goes down, okay, imagine now that it didn't go up. It's that 11% of history. We're down 40, down 50. And at the end, I gave you $100 back as opposed to you losing the 50. So it's very beneficial both on the up and down because of the fact that you've taken this 
the uh, risk of investing. So what's happened in essence here is that we're putting these assets in a Guernsey company because we paid no tax in that Guernsey company, 100% by law. So the interest accrued and the option profits don't attract tax. We sold the customer a share. So he only pays tax one day when he sells that share. Okay. So, um, so the client gets this addition to their portfolio where you would appreciate Viv in five years time, if the markets are down 50, they walk away from that problem. Secondly, if general interest rates have gone up from say two and a half to five on bond yields, they don't take that risk because the hundreds worth 105 years, irrespective of where the prevailing interest rates are. Thirdly, if the client was to have bought a high yielding a fund like an emerging market debt or corporate debt, and the credit spreads blew out, you know, doubled, then in five years' time, all those investors will take a hit. Whereas this share, although it's using the tier two debt of Investec, because it's got a call date in five years, it gets called at 100. You don't have that long liberty risk. So in a portfolio, it, 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 it detracts the risk of three of our major risks in normal international investing. Equities, interest rates rising, and credit spreads widening. So that's, uh, that's why it's so popular. But let me take questions. I'm sure there must be something even yourself or Gary might have picked up that we haven't expanded on enough. Uh, we have a question here from John, but just before I continue, I just want to point out a couple of things, right? Now, there are, there are a couple of structures we put out there that are more aggressive and more, uh, you know, uh, because looking at the upside, okay? But the investing structures, especially these ones with the 100% capital guarantee, are the things that we like to tell clients is almost like a base to your, to your portfolio. You put in a, a certain amount of money into these things, knowing that they are going to be protected against any kind of downturn. I think we may have lost Yapi. Sorry? Oh, are you moving? Sorry. Are no. you so slow? I thought you had been, you'd been <laughs> locked out. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, no. Okay. So uh, basically, yeah. So these things, what they tend to do is they tend to give you the guarantee an upside at or slightly above the average return of basically the global market. Mm -hmm. Now, it, as Yappi mentioned, if you'd been investing just as a straightforward investor in the global market with no costs involved, uh, you know, like those uh, things that the mutual funds add in the cost, whatever. Your returns over time are spectacular. I mean, Warren Buffett had said that when he, if he was to pass away, he would tell his wife just to buy the S&P 500 ETF and just sleep on it. You know what I mean? Because that is going to give you the best returns. As Yapi mentioned, uh, you know, most managed funds, uh, of course, not Rand Swiss's, but other managed funds, mm. uh, uh, over time have missed uh, the benchmark. Um, so if you look at a history of about, say, five years or so, uh, you'd find that the vast majority, I think something like over 80% of uh, managed funds don't match the benchmark. Uh, what this does is it gives you up to the benchmark return, even if the benchmark doesn't do that much. So the benchmark does say 40%, which is below its normal average return, you'll get effectively the average return plus a little bit extra on that benchmark. At the same time, you don't have a chance of losing any money, which is very important. Because what happens here is that you'll find over time that if you were able to avoid the biggest losses, okay, that is where you actually make the most money, okay. In in, uh, I think a, a statement I heard is this: you make sorry, you basically you make your money on the downturn and you collect it on the upturn. Mm. That is how you 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 need to think of investing. You make money when the market falls. You just collect it when the market turns up again. And if you are able to not lose any money on the downfall, you are effectively making money that you can will collect when the market goes up again. If you were buying the market when it fell 40% down, or basically not losing money, the market fell 40% down, and able to get into that 60% uh, uh, market. When the market goes up again, you'll not just get the normal market return. You'll get that market return times an extra return because you got that uh, lower base start. And that is important to look as, as an investor. So that's number one. So as a, any retail investor does not have something like this, which is a 100% capital guaranteed product in with exposure to uh, the world market of something very, very wildly diverse, in the world market or the SP 500 or something like that. And without a guarantee coming to you in dollars, you need to have this in your portfolio. Something like this needs to be in your portfolio. They are rare. You don't get them usually for most uh, you know, uh, suppliers out there. Investing does supply these 100% capital guaranteed 
dollar products, which are very, very key to have in your portfolio, number one. The next thing is taxes. If you were able to basically use this as a base investment for your portfolio, so let's just say you start at the age of 40 and you're looking at 65 to retire. You'll go through five of these things, okay? So you'll go through five separate investments over time. Each time this investment rolls, you're locking in whatever gain you had at that time, but not paying any capital gains. Now, when you retire at 65, you, now you don't have that income coming in anymore that you have to worry about. So Yapi mentioned that you might have to pay 18% tax. If you were basically uh, smart about it, you could actually, when you're 65, maybe delay retirement, uh, you know, retiring an RA for a year, maybe you can delay income for a year or whatever. And in that year, you can start collecting this money, right? Because then you'd actually be able to get a lower tax rate from the start because you wouldn't be taxed at the maximum rate at the start. You'll be taxed all the way from zero. And capital gains, basically, it takes a lot of money to get to the maximum tax rate and capital gains, okay? So you'd be benefiting from that as well. You'd actually be reducing your taxes quite nicely. If you were invested normally, every single time you thought the market was going to crash or whatever, and you wanted to get out or, or lock in some profits, every single time you did that, you'd pay at best capital gains, at worst income taxes, if you were locking in within the three-year period. Here, you get these five lock-ins automatically, effectively for free, without having to worry about capital gains in those periods. And finally, as an SA investor, okay, Look, yes, Yapi did mention all the stuff about, you know, uh, Investec and so on. If you're essay-based, you know, the risk that you have elsewhere, the risk that Investec has are pretty much similar. If Investec was to fall, it would make such an impact on this market that almost everything else would be under pressure as well. It'd be a very difficult time. Now, what I think maybe was mentioned was just how good our financial sector is. If you look at the South African banking sector during the 2008 financial crisis, when the financial companies were in trouble, the number of South African banks that got into the top 20 banks in the world was quite substantial. The reason being is that our banking sector did not do anywhere near as bad as some of the stuff happening overseas. And the reason for this is quite simple. Our banking sector does not do some of the crazy stuff that the international banks do, okay? They like to collect their fees, they like to collect their, their normal incomes over time. But what that does, it makes them much safer than some of the stuff out there where guys are forced to go out and try and do the, like the JP Morgan whale stuff in London where, you know, there's 100, 200 million uh, you know, loss or something coming through because they don't, uh, or they, they are forced to make these, these weird risks. The South African banking sector is incredibly safe. It's one of the best banking sectors in the world, okay? Uh, sometimes we in South Africa look down at what we have, but uh, you know, objectively, just look at where 2008 happened and objectively look at how our, our banks performed versus the Barclays, the City, uh, you know, HSBC, all those big banks did not perform anywhere near as well relative to our banks because we are just a safer banking system than they have. The structure is just a little different. Okay, so let's get, get to questions. Okay, uh, the first question is, uh, if the index increases about 60, uh, what happens? It doesn't really matter. So once you get to 40, you lock it in. Like the previous one, there's 200% gearing, but once you get past that, that, that initial amount, you're not gonna get any more performance out of that. Mm. The only question is, are you happy with that performance? And I think you should be happy because that performance that we're talking about is going to be, at the moment, 52, uh, at the advertised number, 48% returns. 52% returns is just under 9% a year compounding in dollars, which is extremely good. If you had to go look at what Bernie Madoff, not to like you know, compare us to Bernie Madoff, mm -hmm. but what he was offering his clients, right, as a scam, it was 10% compounding a year effectively. That was his scam price. And we are talking about 9% as a, as, a, as a maximum year. So it's not a bad return to have there. Uh, there's a question, maybe you should ask this, uh, answer this, Yapi. Are there any risks being associated with the Guernsey uh, company structure over and above normal credit risk? Okay, so the thing is that the company itself is, is regulated by the Guernsey Financial Service Commission as a closed-ended company. It's also regulated in South Africa under the Companies Act. That's why you always see us get SIPSI sign-off. It's also regulated in Bermuda under the, as a listed share on the Bermuda market. So this company um, Viv, has in, international audit firm that audits and certifies the accounts, audits and certifies the like the final valuation on your client's shares in East Asian. So the company that the client buys the shares of is extremely highly regulated. It's regulated in three jurisdictions with international uh, independent auditors that certify the accounts and in international independent directors, then Guernsey, the directors are independent of Investec. 
And we at Investec are the guys who are giving the um, in, advice as to what to buy, you know, because it's a technical matter as to how to construct it. So I think that the, we've never had any problem. To give you an idea, I've done 28 of these over a 20-year period. And in 28, you have an annual audit, you know, for, for the five-year duration. We've, ne we've not in 28 offerings over 20 years ever had one audit query, one regulatory query, one SARS query, one exchange control reserve bank or any query by any authority of any sorts or one complaint by a client, not one. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, what's the chances of us getting a better gearing? Um, because we've got a couple of weeks more to go. Yeah, so I think the chances are very good. What's happened is when we when I quote you that 130, 130 uh, to whatever I'm quoting, I'm using the average option price of the eight banks. But on the day, as you know, Viv, I get the best one. I get the best price. I'm also quoting you. The, I'm also doing this on the basis that I'm saying at the moment the five-year rates last night would say 295. I'm using for calculation 275. So the base, the rates can drop back 20 basis points. Plus for, for calculus for this indicative numbers, we're quoting that based on a volume of $50 million, which is the break even for the costing, uh, for the fixed costs. But as of this afternoon, we're already over a hundred million dollars on the new deal. You know, because as you know, Viv, today was the date that we needed the rollover feedback. So, so no, we're sitting very pretty. We're sitting very pretty. And in fact, you probably picked up Viv, that the volatilities in the market are sort of not as volatile as they were two, three weeks ago. So where we were getting 2% up, 3% up, 3 down, we're now half, 1 maybe. So I think that uh, if the volatility subside, then that option you buy, um, you know, obviously becomes cheaper. So I think the chances are very good. Plus, I can say to the listeners, I'm a co-shareholder here. Okay. Uh, about 10% of our sales, sales are actually investing staff, directors, senior management uh, for our own money. So we we co invest with the investors. Hmm. No, uh, just uh, uh, like um, not to like put it up here, but let's just say this: uh, Brand Swiss has like like in what comes family money in this as well. So not just uh, like you know our money, but it's family money as well. So this gives us a bit of confidence with these particular kind of shares. Um, sure. A question here, uh, which is quite simple: If you were to exit early, what would um, the cost be? Uh, Yapi mentioned is one point two five percent. Yeah. And let me tell you something, Investic gives you a fair price on that. There's no uh, like spread, like slippage you're going to be seeing beyond that mm -hmm. at all. Um, and basically, they, they are very, I've done this in the past a couple of times with clients were forced to exit early. And, you know, uh, to us, um, the people at Investic get back to me really quickly. They'll provide me pricing every day, okay, uh, on this. And if, if it takes a week or two to get out of it, I'll get you a real price every week if you need to get out of something, you know, urgently. Uh, so that means you don't have to take the price on the day. You're not forced to take like a, a really terrible price. You have a couple, you know, a bit of time. And they're more than happy to help you with that. <coughs> the reason that they're so happy to basically take this on is because they're always available to sell them on to somebody else as well. Mm. They have a so, secondary stock. There's a secondary market out there. So Investec mm -hmm. is not making a loss in this. In fact, they're going to get that 1.25 either way. You know what I mean? So they, they don't mind you selling out because they, they have such a, a list of clients that want to buy into these things later on uh, who may not be, have the money available right now, who may have money tied up in another investment that they're waiting to basically get out of to buy into these two things. So yes, I mean, at any point in time, um, you know, you I get lists all the time from Investec about stuff that's available but they don't stay the same for long. So if there's like maybe a couple of million rounds or something available right now, next week that won't be there anymore because it gets bought up. So they are happy to basically let you out of it. Uh, and this is Mufayapi. Mm -hmm. You speak of decades of experience. Can you give us an indication how investing structured product demand has shifted through COVID and the Ukraine conflict, et cetera? Are people like more getting into this now than the normal investments? Yeah, so I mean, the point is we've got, I started this business with, with no assets. Okay, just a few ideas. We now manage 25 billion of assets. In the last 15 years, this business has grown 100 fold, times 100. So we just see more and more demand. Uh, as far as, you know, just distribution, if you think your business selling my product, uh, we, we started with Investec selling our product, only Investec. We now have 285 companies in the world that sell our product. 
So the demand is massive because you see what the product does is just what it does, what the customer wants. The customer and no one by name, we all want to make a lot of money, but we don't like to lose our money. Okay. So the fact that the product range got 175 product history with no one ever losing a cent in 20 years, people realize that for part of my money, that might be good because this thing might not make me rich, but it'll keep me wealthy. Okay. And you know the story that the people have a very big adversity to losing much more. If you lose a guy 10% and you make him $10, in dollars, he's going to cry for the 10 he lost, but you won't even be overly happy with the 10 you made. And because this is typically South Africans' is nest egg overseas, I mean, dollars is your nest egg. You want to put that away for a rainy day in hard currency with capital protection, as you said, Viv. And our view is there's no good getting there and half the eggs are broken. Okay. So what I don't want as an investor is to put a nest egg overseas and then find that my timing was such that when I wanted my money, uh, the markets were down 50 and I lost 50. Here, if the markets go down 50, to give you an idea, Viv, this thing will price down about 10, 12. Because yeah. the bond's got nothing to do with equities. It's only the option which is impacted by the equities. Okay. Yeah. And when the market's down 50, the volatilities have gone up. So the time value and the Vega value still retain some value. And the fees and costs are amortized over time. Yeah. Uh, but if anybody's interested, we could show them simulations. But... I can't see a situation, and in fact, I don't know of any of our shares that have ever traded more than 12% below the issue price. Yeah. And obviously, if you just hold it till it matures, you get your money back. Yeah. Look, I mean, an important factor, to, as, as Yappi mentioned there, is that, you know, if you were aggressive and you were basically thinking, okay, I think the market basically might crash from here and I want to get into something, you know, in a, in a, in a little while's time, but there's a risk it might go up. You can actually play that. You can say the market crashes, you know, in three years' time, 50% down, in which your case, your, your investment will not be anywhere near as far down because you have the capital guarantee in place mm. there. You could just sell those investors, in the stocks or the shares back to Investec. They'll basically guarantee a price at that time. That'll be a fair price, okay? And then you can take that money that you have, which might be, say, 90% of 100, and go and buy the market that's, say, 50% 50, 50 down, and you'll be able to get in that, that massive year in. Um, there's a, a question about the minimum investment size. The minimum investment size on this is nineteen thousand dollars, one nine. Okay, that's roughly about you know where this currency moves. Uh, let's just say three hundred thousand rounds or so. That's pretty much where you're looking at. Uh, this is a, a sounds like a lot of money, but remember we're taking the money out of the country. That's number one, which we will advance will assist you with. Uh, this is a, a a big chunky investment, and the way I like to phrase it. it we, the way I think the best way to invest is, is like this. You need to have a barbell investment structure. You have a lot of stuff on one end of the scale, a lot of stuff on the other end of the scale, and nothing much in between, okay? The barbell structure is, on one side, you have your bread and butter money, the money that makes sure that you are fed, you maintain your lifestyle, you have your, you know, your, your children taken care of, that kind of stuff. If you want to play for that crazy yacht Bitcoin money, you take that, but you spend, you have a different pool of money for that, mm -hmm. Okay. This is more on that base of your life money. This is where, as Yapi said, where if you made money, this is where you protect your money and grow it at a great level without having that risk of it basically losing over time. Whereas the other stuff that you have, you've seen what's happened to the Bitcoin people. I mean, if you follow them on the on the uh, forums, on Reddit and so on, forget about the Bitcoin guys, the Luna guys are, are crazy, okay? Um, the, their people were making millions in years. Now they've lost millions in, in days, okay? Uh, that's not what this is. This is about uh, a stable long-term investment with guarantees, giving you excellent returns. And over time, I mean, if you look over the last 50, 60, 70, 100 years, this is the investment that really builds fortunes, that really builds basically the long-term uh, you know, wealth of, of people. Yes, a couple of people get wealthy on the Bitcoin and the, and, the, and the fast investing, but the majority of people that make money in the stock market make it like this with that 10% a year, 9% a year, but every single year. Mm. I think that I noticed a question that I popped up and as to who can invest. So just as to what all the parties that can invest, you know, individuals in South Africa can invest, can invest directly or through a foreign stockbroking account. If you want to custody it at, uh, say, Swiss Quote or wherever, whichever company one uses, uh, or you can buy it uh, through Glacier 
mutual momentum wrappers, uh, Viv. Uh, foreign trusts can invest, foreign uh, corporates can invest. Anybody in the world who can buy a Bermuda listed share can invest. And Bermuda is a white flag country. It's like New York, like London. Uh, the shares have an ISIN number, have a Bloomberg ticker. So uh, there's, no, there's no limit on who can invest. Um, only US citizens, funny enough, can't invest because of US regulations. Yeah, okay. but other people can all invest and, okay. and trust in entities. Uh, UK residents? UK residents can invest. Yeah. Okay. We just, you can't go marketing and selling the, uh, actively because then you need their regulations. But okay. uh, we have quite a few people who live in South Africa and then they, they immigrate to go and live in, a, in another country and they can invest. The, the beauty here as well, Viv, is that it's Guernsey Company listed in Bermuda. So there's no CITES. We don't have a problem with the UK. It's not a UK share. It's not a USA share. Mm -hmm. So it's, and that's just wasn't in 20 years ago when I started. It wasn't intentional, but it has worked out a big advantage. Mm. Uh, Gareth, uh, a question about whether or not you can deposit the returns in a UK bank account. Uh, we can do that for you. Remember, we'll do the, the transfers and stuff. So when it pays out, it'll pay out to where we get it from, and then we'll be able to take, put that money in a UK bank account for you afterwards. Okay, that's nothing to do with investing. That'll be us as Ransus with our, mm. our Forex uh, you know, department. So we can actually get the money into a UK account. Another thing I can mention to you, Viv, for your clients, if anybody's selling out the current clients, uh, the end value is also an audit certified value. Okay, so we, we understand that people need to trust. And part of the way we set up the company is that at the end, when the client gets their final settlement for the number of shares they had, it's, it's the audit certified valuation. So, okay. so that they can be very comfortable that they're getting a third audit of their numbers. Okay. We have a question here about what happens from a state point of view if you were to pass away. Look, investing won't give you tax uh, advice, and neither will we at the moment. We can set you up with somebody that can help you with that. Uh, it depends on the size. I've had issues where a person has just passed away, unfortunately. Uh, literally, a, for the last product that's sold, he passed away uh, six weeks ago. Uh, but he was below a certain uh, quantum, and that obviously was beneficial because there was no need to do a probate, but it depends on the size, it depends on a number of different factors. So we'd have to discuss that more in detail if you have any um, you know, questions about yeah, that. But I think it can be said that uh, this will be a share like any other share. Uh, mm -hmm. So in other words, it'll be treated, let's say I have Microsoft or General Electric. The share, when, when the people inherit the share, whoever is inheriting, can decide to keep it or sell it, uh, it doesn't, it's, death doesn't force them to sell the share. So yeah. th that's the election of the, of the estate, the beneficiaries, uh, with, the, with the trustees or the settlers or whoever the decision makers are. Okay, anyone else? Okay, I think that's about uh, it. There. So the process for doing this basically is you need to get in contact with uh, Rand Swiss, okay? Uh, like Yapi said, it closes basically uh, in two weeks' time. Um, so it's on the 20th. So we're looking at a very short period. We would need to do a couple of things for you if you are a new investor. Firstly, you would need to get money out of the country to invest in this. That may require, depending on the size, uh, you know, certain uh, things. Uh, so the sooner you get in contact with us, the better it is. We will assist you not just in uh, doing the investment, but also in offshore transfers as well. So if you have cash in South Africa, we can help you with that. If you have cash overseas, it's, it'll be even easier, okay? Uh, but like I said, just get into contact with us as soon as possible, and we'll walk you through the process of actually getting this stuff opened. Perfect. So do you want to see if there's any last questions? Anybody saw um, anything there? Uh, let me see. One more thing. Uh, okay. So uh, the question is, in the, in the rollover document, there's a mention of a dividend, Okay. Please explain what that dividend means in terms of the rollover document. Yeah, so if the clients are rolling, then they, they're just going to get the final value as yeah. the new value of the new share. Yeah. The, the dividend discussed is in the, in the matter of if the bonds aren't called after five years, then we as investi investment advisors will pay to the client the capital uh, that they get a, a yield on that capital. That could be a dividend or could be a return of capital. Plus the, the option profits live after five years will be paid out either as a special dividend by the Guernsey company 
or in fact, I can actually do it as a return of capital. We'll we'll do the one that's got the best um, best impact for the customer. Okay. Okay. So there aren't naturally dividends in these shares uh, yeah. because the indices are price only indices. Yes. So just to understand what happens here, Investec is doing this not because it likes us or it wants to make a, you know, out of nothing. They have a no, requirement. No, we like you. Of course we like you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what they have a requirement to have a certain uh, amount of, of, uh, of, 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 of deposits at the bank, right? Because the more deposits a bank has, the more or more money it has, like the less lockdown for a long period of time, the safer the bank is seen to be by the regulators. The regulators have a requirement. The requirement is for that money to be there for 10 years. Okay. But invest tech, but the, after five years, because you have a shorter period of time, so year three, year four, uh, year five, as you get from like, you know, those first few years, it's, it's a long period of time to go until you actually pay the money back. So you get a lot of credit for that. But when you have one year to go, you have a small amount of credit for that. And so invest tech wants to basically maximize when it has that money uh, from you. So that's the first five years. After that, it really doesn't want to have that money from you because it doesn't get as much credit for having that money from you. So yeah. it has a big incentive not to keep that money after five years. But should something happen where they are forced to do that, what they're going to do is that they're going to give you back your profit on your uh, options. And then they're going to keep these bonds behind, which is your capital protection. The maximum they can keep it for is 10 years. But in that next five-year period, they're going to have to be paying you an, uh, uh, an output. Uh, you said it's 5 point something. How much was it? 5.6% like dollar yield. So you're getting a 5.6% US dollar bond, which is very attractive. Okay, uh, which is an incredibly, uh, like I said, uh, unlikely event because investing, Very unlikely. Has, yeah, they don't have an incentive to that. It would require some kind of, uh, of, 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 of the, like, you know, big, uh, like, you know, movement from that. Uh, there's a question here. Uh, would you want to use an insurance wrapper for estate planning purposes uh, rather than the benefit? Okay, it so uh, on the you know, some people, you, yeah. you answered, have you got it there? Yeah, so uh, some people would require that. Uh, it depends on your particular circumstances. Uh, I would advise you, if you're thinking about that, get in touch with us. We can help you with that as well. Uh, we, we work with a number of companies that do these wrappers as well. Um, but it may only is advisable if you really need it, because where the wrapper comes at a cost. So you're paying about 0. 0.6, 0.5% every year for being in the wrapper. Also, it's not suitable for everybody because the wrapper also comes with an inbuilt tax rate as well, which may not be the right tax rate for you. Uh, so some people that earn no income the wrapper will have a tax rate that might be higher than the tax rate that you are paying. So it has to be a discussion with us. It's not a global uh, thing. Okay. Uh, somebody asked me here, what is my uh, uh, email address? Uh, you'll be emailed this thing. Uh, it's verb at ranswiss.com, but we we'll all get an email uh, with the presentation um, and hopefully a link to the video. If uh, Pascal approves our, our presentation and thinks we are suitably enough to be uh, you know, publicized video wise, I think we did pretty well today, so I think we will get that. But we'll definitely give you a presentation, uh, a copy of this, this presentation uh, as well. So you'll have an email address there. Just get in contact with us uh, to discuss that further. Okay. In a second, anyone else? Um, sorry, just trying to get up here and see if there's anyone else. No, I don't think anybody else is asking anything at the moment. Okay. Okay. But you okay. can just get all of us if there's anything else that comes up. With. Yes, we will. Okay. Excellent. Thank um, you. Thank you for coming through, Yapi. Uh, Yapi is basically the top guy at, at uh, Structured Production in South Africa, I would say. And uh, he's always like a wealth of experience. So we're very lucky to have had him. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for coming through. Cheers. Bye-bye. Eh?